everyone, Erin here, and today I'm going to be doing a book review. Actually, it's kind of a series review um, because I've read the first two books in this series and I didn't really talk about the first one as far as I can remember in a, in a booktube video. So um, the books are the Miriam Black series by Chuck Wendig and the first one is Blackbirds and the second one is Mockingbird. Now, I did not know what to expect from these books when I picked them up. I follow Chuck on Twitter, so I kind of got a, a sense of his sense of humor and his personality, and I was expecting more comedy <laughs> than these books have in them. Um, these are very dark, they're very twisty, they're fantastical in that um, Miriam Black has a, an ability to see how people are going to die. So she's psychic in that way. If she touches you, she can see how and when you're going to die. So the first book, she is on her own. She's kind of a bit of a con man, con artist. She, um, she basically, because she knows when people are going to die, if she meets them and they're not good people, she'll actually be there when they die and steal their stuff. So that's how she makes her living. That's how she gets by. <clears throat> until she meets a man who she sees that he's, he dies in a murder and he's a nice guy. He actually, I believe, oh no, the reason why she's interested in, in what happens with Lewis is he dies with her name on his lips. So obviously she's involved in his life in some way and she needs to know more. So she becomes involved with him and as she does, she, she, she likes him. He's a nice guy. He's a truck driver. Uh, he doesn't seem to do anything horrifyingly bad. And so she ends up wanting to save his life because she feels like when he dies and he says her name that she's responsible for his death. So that's what this first book is about. Um, her story meeting Louis or Louis and then um, trying to save his life. In our second book, Mockingbird, Miriam has been convinced to settle down and try to have a normal life instead of, you know, going from town to town and grifting and, and basically trying to, like, living this hobo lifestyle that really isn't good for anyone. So we, she starts out this book working in a grocery store and it's not a pleasant experience for her. And she wears gloves because the last thing she ever wants to do is have contact with people. She has a run-in with the manager of the store and leaves angrily and when she comes back shortly thereafter to apologize, she, she wants to know how the manager is going to die. So she shakes the manager's hand or tries to shake the manager's hand and she sees how the woman's going to die and in fact it's like in the next five minutes in a holdup in the store and other people die at the same time. So. <laughs> That's how this book starts, and she is unable to change all of the events, and somebody that she actually really is fond of uh, ends up dying, and so she's affected by that, and she kind of does the, screw this, why am I trying to live a, a normal life, you know, nobody treats me well, I, you know, I, when I try to live a normal life, I still find this stuff out, and somebody I like died for no good reason, so now she's on the run, not really on the run again, but on the road again. But she's asked to help a woman, a teacher at a local school, who believes she's dying and um, the people around her think that she's a hypochondriac, so she, Miriam is asked to go and see how she's going to die. She'll get paid for this, so she's actually earning a living by doing this, and she'll find out how this woman dies and she can maybe make the hypochondriac less you know, convinced she's going to die. So she does that. I'm not going to tell you what the outcome of that is, but at the same time, she meets um, some students at the school, and she touches one of them and sees that she dies a horrible death when she's about 18 or 19 years old, and it's a horrifying death. I mean, these books do not, they're graphic, right? They are, um, there's lots of violence in them. They are, they're that thriller verging on horror. And so she sees how the one girl's gonna die, and when she goes back and she's trying to investigate this to prevent the girl's death, she finds, she touches another girl at the same school, and 
that girl also dies in the same manner, but at a different time. And so now Miriam is trying to um, stop this from happening. And it actually, it's it, interesting reading this book because she, um, there's some irony in what she discovers. So when she finally finds the culprit, she asks the, the person responsible, why? Why women? Why are you only killing women? And um, I'll be honest, so Chuck Wendig is very much, um, he's actually been called a social justice warrior on Twitter by people who, you know, don't agree with his ideas. I don't know that I agree with all of his ideas, but he is, you know, he believes in equality between the genders. He believes in, you know, like race equality, all of that. So he's asking, he's got his character asking the villain why they only murder women. And I thought it was interesting because it's a reflection of Miriam Black's behavior. And I don't really want to tell you more than that because, yeah, it, it'll give away some more, some details you don't need to know, but it was, there's a bit of irony in, in the end of it and, and this discussion. And, but it also shows how society views women and how we are expected to behave, um, how we are different from men. The expectations for us are significantly different than they are for men. So that's part of why only girls are, or only women are being killed by this this villain. Um, I thought it was really interesting actually. That was that was a scene that I just kind of sat there and went, wow, you know, um, in a time when there are people looking for more thrillers that do not involve, like, don't have women as victims because that's just continuing that cycle, the, the depiction of women as weaker and, and targets for this kind of violence. We have Chuck Wendig taking a look at that violence and looking for reasons why it's happening and a societal look that I was not expecting to see in a book like this, you know, it, it's a... It's not a book I expected to go that deep, and it did for me. Like when I when I read it, I went, "Wow, this is a this is a pretty big comment on our society and how we view the roles of men and women, and why women are victims of violence so much more than men." So that I th I loved. I mean, I lo read this in two days. It's a quick read. Um, Chuck Wendig's writing is very terse. Like Miriam Black is a She's not, she's a sympathetic character, but she's not the most sympathetic character, obviously, because, you know, she's a drifter, she's a grifter, you know, she'll, she'll take your money, that's, <laughs> without any second thoughts. She's also very hard, like, she doesn't want to talk to people. When she does talk to people, her sentences are very terse and short, and because the book is told in her point of view, that is the writing style for a lot of it. Um, so you'll find that like the chapters are short, the sentences are short, it's very, it's written in a very quick and easy to read manner. The problem that I had is that sometimes that personality, Miriam's personality, bleeds into other characters and I'm not sure if it's because she is the point of view, so she sees their actions through her own personal lens, or if the characters aren't being fully fleshed out and this writing style tends to turn them into more of a Miriam Black character instead of someone that maybe wouldn't be quite as terse and, and short sensed. So that was one of the, the things that I found interesting with some of the characters in this book. Um, but I still loved it. I would, I would absolutely recommend this. This is the second in the series. There are currently four books in the series. I have the third right here. So I will be reading this probably in February because um, I'm just enthralled by the character of Miriam Black. And then after the Cormorant is the fourth book, which is Thunderbird. So I don't know, I, I can only assume there's going to be more books after that um, because this, this series is just amazing. Like I, I enjoy it because it's different. It's not like other series. Um, and he does not write a female character like other authors do. That is one of the criticisms I've read of his writing, is that 
he doesn't write a believable female character. Now, in a time when we want to believe that women can be exactly like men, I have no problem with a woman like Miriam, with her background and her experiences being more masculine in her behavior because you know what, you would be. And I think living on the streets and being homeless and, and living in these situations where you're not really understood because at any time if someone touches you, you're going to go into this little, <laughs> you're going to have a vision of their death, which obviously affects how you interact with them. I, I can see why that might make her less feminine and more masculine, and I don't know that that would be a legitimate criticism for me for these books. So yeah, that is um, the Chuck Wendig's Miriam Black series, the first two books, Blackbirds and Mockingbird. So I hope you give them a try. They are thriller horror genre, and uh, they're really good. They've got great suspense and great some pretty good characters. Um, have you read them? And if you have, what did you think of them? How do you feel about Miriam and the world that Chuck, Chuck Wendig has created around her? Um, I will talk to you again soon. Have a great day.